Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lil Deputing, and this is a Dell XPS 11, which looks like an Ultrabook, and it basically is. It's a thin and light machine that uh, has an Intel Core i5 Haswell low power processor, a high resolution display, 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, and you can use it like a laptop. But you can also fold the screen down so that it's facing away from the keyboard and use it as a tablet or prop it up and uh, sort of use it in a tent mode style like this. So you can see that it uh, supports touchscreen gestures. Uh, you can run desktop apps, Windows 8 apps like Netflix or Kindle and use it either as a tablet or as a notebook or some combination thereof. Um, it has pretty nice specs. It has a Core i5 Haswell CPU, like I mentioned. It's not the fastest uh, Haswell chip available, but it's reasonably fast, especially if you're upgrading from an earlier system with Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge or something else. Uh, we've got USB 3.0, full-size SD card slot, uh, speaker. Over here we've got another USB 3.0 port, HDMI, headset jack, and that's for the power adapter, speaker, and volume buttons and the power button is this little glowing guy in the corner here. Uh, makes sense to have the power button in that position when you're using it in tablet mode because you can sort of just tap it, turn the screen on or off. It's a little bit weird in laptop mode because it means that the power button is down here. Now, I haven't uh, pointed out the most unusual feature of this device yet uh, is the keyboard. Uh, when you're folding a device so the screen's back 360 degrees and you're using it in sort of tablet mode like we looked at. Uh, Lenovo has been doing that for a while with their yoga laptops. HP has a laptop that does that. A couple of other companies have sort of those 360 degree rotating uh, devices. But you often wind up with these physical keys behind you. Here, there are no physical keys. The keyboard is actually a touch sensitive silicone uh, uh, keyboard with sort of this rubbery texture to it. And that means that the keys are, there's a little bit uh, raised above the base so you can sort of feel where one key ends and the next one begins. But when you're typing, you're actually just tapping on the screen. You're not actually pushing down on anything. So let's go ahead and open Notepad and start typing. It works reasonably well, but I find I miss keys every now and again because you don't have that sensation of actually touching the keyboard. And sometimes I wind up pushing down a little bit harder than I would really like to on the keys uh, just to make sure that I've hit them properly. So my, my hands tend to hurt after long periods of typing. Dell says the uh, one of the choices here was that uh, the reason that they went with this sort of unusual keyboard is that this is a tablet-first design, meaning that it's really designed uh, first and foremost to be used as a tablet, but it also has this physically attached keyboard that you can use whenever you like. Now, Dell also offers an XPS 12 laptop that has a physical uh, keyboard and also has a different sort of mechanism for switching over into, uh, into tablet mode. So if you really want a, a device with a keyboard, they recommend getting the X, uh, XPS 12. The XPS 11, on the other hand, has this uh, touch-sensitive, unusual keyboard that's good for typing out short items, but you wouldn't really want to write the, the great American novel or even the horrible American novel using this keyboard, I think. Uh, it's been the most frustrating part of using this laptop. Uh, especially considering, in all other ways, it's pretty nice uh, in terms of speed, performance, uh, portability. I really like this device. Uh, the keyboard, I am not such a big fan of. You can see it's a backlit keyboard. Below it, there's a very large touchpad. Uh, supports multi-touch gestures, edge swiping, and so forth. Have no problems with the touchpad. Uh, it's just the keyboard that I don't particularly love. Um, other interesting features uh, include a 2560 by 1440 pixel display. And right now I have it set up so that uh, I'm using the full display resolution, but uh, a lot of the texts and images and other things are set to the uh, larger setting. You can adjust this, so let's see what happens when we go to smaller. You notice all the icons became really, really tiny down there in the bottom, and if I rebooted, it would also make some of the other uh, items look tiny as well. Uh, what that means is, if we want to launch an application, now this is what YouTube looks like. Uh, this is what Lilliputing looks like. Uh, on an 11.6 inch display, it's kind of hard to see anything unless you zoom the heck in. 
Um, it does give you a lot of screen space if you really need it for some reason, but uh, so you could run a lot of applications side by side in this mode, but it would be hard to actually see what's going on. So for the most part, uh, you're probably going to want to go with this larger setting or maybe somewhere in between. I found that every now and again I'll sort of go to this mi middle ground where uh, not everything is quite so tiny, but it works pretty nicely if you want to do side-by-side -side applications and uh, sort of have them show up in full screen. So instead of um, going at the largest text and fonts, this is sort of the second largest setting. Uh, but for the most part, I found myself just using the default settings. This is how it looks out of the box. Uh, in terms of performance, you can see I've got Handbrake open here. You can see some benchmarks at lilliputing.com. Um, not the fastest system I've ever tran uh, used for transcoding audio and video files and so forth, but reasonably fast. Uh, works pretty well for loading resource intensive applications like GIMP image editing application here. Now here's another one though where since it's not really optimized for high uh, pixel count displays, what you'll notice here is that certain parts of this application actually look just fine. So the file and the image and the layers and the colors and these menus and everything look fine. These actually look really tiny here though. These are the buttons for choosing your paint brushes and other settings. And so I find that GIMP is actually a little tricky to use on this because of the high resolution display. Now that's not really Dell's fault. Um, it's more that uh, they're a little ahead of the game here. And this is something that's, that you're gonna see on a lot of newer laptops or tablets that have high resolution screens. When you're running desktop style applications that haven't been updated to take advantage of those, high uh, pixel per inch displays, uh, they might not look great. Now, desktop apps, I mean, uh, uh, tablet style apps or Windows 8 store apps, on the other hand, do look pretty good. So you can see here we've got the Netflix app. My uh, internet connection's been a little slow here, but... And you can even run multiple apps side by side here. So let's go ahead and load a YouTube video. Celeron 2955 U have uh, if the limited storage RAM aren't necessarily enough for you, though, it's relatively easy to open up the case and so you can see that we're uh, upgrade them. And doing so doesn't necessarily... We're able to run two videos side by side, YouTube and Netflix. Um, we could switch that over to the Kindle application or games or other things. Doesn't have any real problems running multiple apps on the same screen. So uh, overall I'm pretty impressed with the performance of Windows. Uh, using it as a desktop or as a laptop computer uh, works pretty well other than the keyboard. Um, I've written a bunch of uh, articles for Lilliputing. I've edited some videos. I've done some other work on here. And, and overall Performance-wise, I have no complaints. It gets uh, around six to seven hours of battery life. Uh, Dell says I think that you might be able to get a little bit more under some circumstances, but in uh, in my tests, about seven hours seems seems right, and that's not bad for a machine that is incredibly thin and uh, weighs just about two and a half pounds. Uh, does not have a user replaceable battery, so if you do need extra uh, battery life, you're going to need to use some sort of external battery pack, or just make sure to carry the the uh, charger with you. Charger is reasonably compact. It's not quite cell phone charger compact, but it's not one of these big clunky power bricks. And my uh, my only real reservation about recommending this is the keyboard, especially when you consider the price. Uh, as I mentioned, Dell says, well, the keyboard's not so much of an issue because they're really sort of pitching this as a tablet that also happens to work as an Ultrabook. And uh, that would be a great deal if it were maybe seven, eight hundred dollars but this uh, device starts at about $1,000. This particular configuration with the Core i5 processor and 128 gigs of uh, storage, 4 gigs of RAM, uh, this configuration sells for about $1,300. You can sometimes find it on sale for under $1,200. Uh, that's a lot of money for a device that happens to be a uh, tablet with a, a weird keyboard. It's um, easier to justify if it were a full-fledged ultrabook that was meant to be used as an ultrabook, I'd say. Um, especially when you consider that tablets, I mean, it's nice to have these tablet functions, it's nice to be able to do the touchscreen applications, um, but it's a little bit weird to uh, interact with, um, I don't even know what I'm trying to show you here, it's a little bit weird to interact with this on an 11.6 inch, 2.5 pound device. Uh, it's the sort of thing where you can see I'm sort of holding it on the table, it's a lot more comfortable than lifting it. Um, so anything that you sort of get into this size and this weight, I feel like it makes more sense to think of it as a laptop that happens to work as a tablet when you occasionally want it to. If you're really looking for a tablet, you might want something thinner and lighter.
and cheaper. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a uh, video review of the Dell XPS 11. You can find more details at lilliputing.com.